hologram program activated. Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. We will study class 9 science in that physics chapter number 9 that is force and laws of motion. Now, in the previous chapter, we studied about motion, what are the various concepts related to motion, types of motion, right? Related concept means velocity, speed, acceleration. We also saw how are the graphs which we can draw in motion, right? We studied equations of motion. So in the previous chapter, we got to know what exactly is motion. Now a branch of physics dealing with motion without considering its causes is called kinematics, right? So what we have studied in chapter eight was kinematics, okay? But in that chapter, we didn't discuss why there is a motion. What is the real cause of motion? Suppose in acceleration you studied there is a change in velocity, but did we study that why there is change in velocity, how there is change in velocity, right? So these are few things that are necessary. That is what we are going to study in this chapter. A branch of physics describing motion along with its causes and properties is called dynamics. So kinematics and dynamics are same uh, sub branches which studies motion, but kinematic only studies about motion without causes, but dynamics will consider the cause and properties. So in this chapter, we will study the cause of motion that is force. And that is itself our title of this chapter, force. Now, there were discussions about motion and causes since earlier times. Every, everything was a kind of belief. Right? Because there were philosophers, not scientists in the earlier times. Okay, So philosophers, they came up with their thoughts and belief about motion. So mostly they were quite puzzled about motion. But if we count and give credit to who were those personalities who gave a clear concept about motion, so we can give credit to three people. They are Aristotle, Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton. Note that Aristotle was a philosopher, not a scientist. Still, he has some considerable contributions. Now, Galileo Galilei has done experiments related to motion based on that concept, based on that experiments, he concluded many things. And taking help of that, Isaac Newton finally studied motion and came up with some logical explanations. So he made rules and laws of motion, three laws of motion that we are going to study. And these laws of motions are still applicable in mechanics, right? So they are the truest known facts which are related to motion. Now consider some observations about motion in our day to day life. Uh, there are infinite examples, but let us see few examples. A book lying on the table remains steady as it is if we do not apply any external effect. In order to throw a ball upward, we must exert a push to the ball. To bring a football into motion from the rest, a person must push it from the foot. To stop any object rolling or even to stop from moving, we must apply force in the opposite direction of its motion. In other terms also, uh, other examples you see, uh, we need electric current to start any electrical appliances like fan you take, right? That is why I kept uh, full stop because you can add anything to fan, AC, right? Any kind of motor, generator, we need an electric current to start, right? So there are many examples in which we can see that to bring the body into motion from rest or to slow down or to stop the body's motion, we need some external agency. 
and this external agency normally it is in the form of push or pull so that is why this push or pull is called force now let us now ponder let us now think about force what is that in fact no one has seen tasted or felt a force right it is not any object force is an effect that is why we have written external agency an effect right you see it is used in everyday actions apart from push and pull it is used in lifting stretching holding twisting pressing breaking so these all are the actions which determines that there is some external agency called force which does things different kind of things now effects of force what effects we observe or what force can do so force can move a body in rest position force can stop a moving body force can change the direction of a moving body force can change the shape and size of a body force can change the speed or velocity of a moving body these all things you have studied in your lower standard so you may know all the examples related to that for example i'll give you uh, uh, one or two effects let us discuss force can move a body in rest position right when a when a spring is there it will it if it is on the table it will be on the table as far as nothing external is acted upon it suppose a book is lying on the table it will lie it will stay in the rest position until and unless we apply force right force can change the direction of a moving body you see sports in sports if you take football to change the direction of football or to pass the football we need to give the force even in hockey to change the direction to pass we need force so likewise there are many examples for each effect so in the comment section please write the examples of each effect of force at least one right now one note is that force is a vector quantity that means it has magnitude as well as it has direction okay and the unit of force is newton that we will see later on now types of forces classification of forces these again these things are you have studied in the lower standard like there are contact force non contact force force which is acting by remaining in contact with the body if you kick the football we need to touch the football so we need a contact friction force need a contact right non contact do not need any contact like gravity like electricity like magnetic force they act from a distance they act in a field so they don't need contact so they are known as non contact or uh, they are also called as field forces okay another classification is balanced force and unbalanced force forces under whose combined effect there is no change in the stationary state or state of motion they are known as balanced force suppose a table is there and Uh, on the opposite direction two students are there who are giving forces so if in the opposite direction both forces are equal so the resultant net force will be zero so table will not move okay equal forces table will not move unbalanced force forces under whose combined effect a stationary body comes in motion or there is change in speed or velocity they are called unbalanced forces right and the resultant the net force of unbalanced force is not zero wherever the greater amount of force is applied that that object will move in that direction so unbalanced force suppose there are two students uh, in opposite direction they are pushing the table one student pushes with a larger amount of force as compared to the opposite student so what will happen the net force will not be zero the table will move in the direction of the greater amount of force so they are balanced and unbalanced forces so today we talked about the initial introduction of force uh, what is the difference between the previous chapter and this chapter what are the classification of forces what are the effects of forces who were the scientists who contributed in uh, developing the concept of forces right so that's all for this video but you finish the task which i have given comment the examples of effects of force please make the notes very carefully and start this chapter in your notebook that's all for today thank you